Hi, uh, this talk is about how to read more books. The more books you read, the better your verbal skills will get, the better your vocabulary. So one secret here I'm going to talk about this more in a little bit is what I call it the magic bathroom. I always want to have some type of textbook, a relatively big complicated book on a table in the bathroom, a movable table. Obviously you have to move the table and it's good to read something complicated. There's nothing else to do at that moment. So I found that it's a great way to read complex textbooks. Because um, otherwise, you know, a lot of times you feel like you want to do something else rather than read that complex textbook. You know, in this location, it's entertainment. And um, I'll, I'll come back to the slide in just a moment here. Okay, so as far as reading more books, it has to be part of your personal philosophy. Anything that you're going to do long term, you have to believe that it's worthwhile and meaningful. Otherwise, you won't continue with it. So, you know, I think it's a worthwhile goal to try to make yourself highly educated, to think that it's cool to know a lot. I know with most people, it's strange, but they think it's cool to be stupid. And what I mean by that is, they won't say, oh yeah, it's cool to be stupid, but they'll have read zero books in one year. And they'll think it's odd if a person's reading and talking about books. Um, and so you don't want to be average. You don't want to go to lowest common denominator. It's better to look to people who you admire and, and try to be like them. So have intellectual mentors. I've noticed, you know, in all my years now, I'm 58, highly articulate people. They make more money. They've got more opportunities in life. They're funnier at telling jokes. They're better able to argue. Uh, they're better able to defend themselves when somebody messes with them, makes fun of them, or treats them unfairly. They're better able to write. They're better public speakers. Like if I look at nurses, the nurse that is the best at writing and most articulate, she tends to be most likely to be promoted, okay? And it's good to be highly articulate, okay? So here's a graph with uh, the red line. Most persons, what happens to them is after freshman year of high school, it's so miserable having to read stuff they're not ready for, like Julius Caesar and Great Expectations. That's the worst book by Charles Dickens. Okay, And a freshman in high school is simply not ready to read Julius Caesar. And so it's such a miserable experience. Most persons never read another book again on their own outside of school. Um, and because of that, they, they don't develop mentally. They sort of stay at this level and I think they become dull-minded. Okay, the more books you read, the more you're going to learn, the more your verbal skills are going to improve. You can learn a lot nowadays, of course, listening to podcasts or watching internet educational videos and I'd consider those reading equivalents. But it's also good to spend time looking at a book. You're like swimming in letters and you get better with, uh, when we, better with letters and words when you do that. Okay. I'm just showing you a picture here. This is my father, and he was a physician. He had been a boxing champion when he, when he was in college, and he quit boxing because he was afraid he'd get you know, head trauma, brain damage from that. This was his brother who was a physicist, and here's his brother who's another physician. And my father was from Ireland. My mother's from Puerto Rico. And the reason I show you is my father every day would work, and then at night he would walk the dog, and then he would read. Um, so exercise and reading, and he was a great role model for me because it motivated me always to read. Um, this guy in the middle here, his brother was a brilliant guy, but he you know, ate too much meat and he died of a myocardial infarction at 51 years of age. So that was another reminder that you know, you gotta be careful what you eat. It doesn't matter how smart you are. If you fill you up your belly with meat and oil and other things, you're gonna end up with plugged up arteries. This other brother was a physician and he was very sort of mean uh, and insulting towards my father and towards me when I was young. He would come over to the house, he would have just read some books recently, and he would like ask us questions and be very insulting, you know, constantly calling me stupid and a moron and all this stuff. And in a way, you know, looking back, he was probably just joking around, but at the time I was very offended. And so whenever there was a family holiday, I would always read several books so I could ask him questions and see if he would know the answers to what I was reading about. And I think this was very good for me. Being from Ireland, my father knew nothing about the United States, nothing about school, academics, anything in this country. But 
He loved to read, and reading was seen in my own eyes as something you do uh, when you're around other men to debate topics and to be able to defend your position. And you better be able to defend it or they'll pick you apart and just mock you. And that was actually very good for me. The other thing is, here's a picture when I was at Stanford as a freshman year. It was very lonely. I came from the Chicago suburbs. I didn't know a single person. And so it was like, thank God I like studying and, you know, training for sports. I was a wrestler at that time because reading is something you can always do alone when you're lonely. And it, it's, it's a key thing for school. When I first started out, I was way behind all the other kids. I had never taken an AP class. I didn't even, I never even heard of an AP class. I didn't even take honors classes in high school. I was just in regular classes. My focus, my self-identity was an athlete. But as it turned out, the fact that I was reading books and arguing with my father and my uncle, that ended up being very useful because I could call my dad up on the phone when I was taking the history of uh, Western philo literature or philosophy or something. I forget uh, the class at Stanford. It was a required class at that time, Western Civ. Um, I could talk to my dad about the books on the, you know, on the phone, and that, that helped me. So it's just useful to have a knowledge of history and all this other stuff. Okay, so now what else before we get into some of the details of how you do it? It's good to have heroes, intellectual heroes. You know, for me, it was my father. Later on, I had heroes like Cicero and Newton. And I've noticed a lot of the great men from reading biographies, they were voracious readers. It's pretty typical of somebody who becomes, you know, really advanced genius in some field that they went through a phase of their life where they just read constantly for whatever the reason. Uh, they were lonely or they wanted to self-develop themselves. And that's, I think, really an essential, essential part of really increasing a person's intellectual abilities. And it's normal for brilliant people to read a lot. Uh, that's what they want to do. That's where most of the information is. Um, if you don't know what to read, books on self-improvement are often good, whatever the subject might be. Biographies are often a great way because you learn like real life, like history. Or just pick up a famous novel and, and go with that for, there's always something to read. I mean, I always have at least 10, 20 books I want to read. I never, I wish I could get to them. You shouldn't get into your car unless you have an audio book, either, you know, an audio CD or a podcast or an, uh, something off your phone. But, I mean, the, it's, it's a waste of time to listen to the radio. It's the same songs all the time. It's the same news. It's always some, you know, lightweight crap. So you want to always be listening to books. So that way you'll get something out of that commuting time. Okay, then, you know, everybody gets busy and I wanted to create more time to read. By the way, I routinely will get through three complete books a week. And if I'm focused on reading, I'll get through five. And that's a pretty common thing when you read about people in history. Uh, Oscar Wilde, Teddy Roosevelt, lots of other people, Mencken, they read a book a day. And um, so the magic bathroom, I made up a name for the bathroom. I saw the Monty Python skit, every sperm is sacred. I thought to myself, well, every void is sacred. So every time you void in the bathroom, you'd have a paperback book right near the spot so you can at least read a page. Okay, I won't let myself go into the bathroom for anything and not read at least one page. Um, quite often, much more than that. Then I saw a biography about Mozart and he wrote it's only fitting to write while shitting and I thought well gee that's a great idea to make use of that time and so with that portable table in there I always put a book on the table I think it only fitting to read while so I'm always getting some reading done and again like I said it's a great time to read the big textbooks um, I put pictures on the wall of things I wanted to memorize so I get I always get something valuable out of walking into the bathroom I put my some of my heroes on the wall in the bathroom to inspire me because you want your mind focused on the people you admire and your heroes rather than all the nonsense that goes around us every day. Okay, here is a book that I wrote years ago called Straight A's at Stanford and on to Harvard. And this picture right here is a different portable table I had at a different bathroom. Um, and then all the pictures on the wall you know, at that time, when I first put those pictures on the wall, I was studying for my neuroradiology boards exam. Um, these are translation books. I had, you know, was studying languages. 
But the bottom line is you can get a lot of learning out of that bathroom because it's amazing how often you have to walk in the bathroom, rinse your hands off, etc. Okay, so here again is another version of a portable table in what I would call the magic bathroom. And if you just get yourself in this habit of always getting some reading done when you go in the bathroom, you're going to get a tremendous amount of reading done. And you'll notice your verbal skills improve. And it's enjoyable. Let's see what else did I want to remind myself to say here. Um, always carry a book with you. Like if you have to go somewhere where you might have to stand in line, bring a book and read a book. Um, if you're going to go somewhere, you know, for school or something and there's a time between classes, have a book with you to read. And you'll just get a lot of book, you'll get a lot of reading done. I made it a, a vow that I will not waste any time. If I ever have a free moment, I've always got a book with me and I will start reading. Um, and that way I always get some learning out of every day because you don't, you never stay the same. You're either improving your knowledge or you're going down. So you want to always be, just keep it going. It doesn't take any effort. This is just a daily habit. Um, also, when I come home, you know, after a day of work, for example, I'll go on a stationary bike and I'll read while I'm on the stationary bike. If I just come home, let's say somebody else is on the bike, I will walk in circles around my house and I'll just read a book while I'm doing that to get a little exercise. You know, you got to move to get the lymphatic uh, flow going. Um, if I have a day off and it depends, I'll either be writing, you know, a book chapter or I'll be reading or something. But anyways, I found this an enjoyable thing in life. Aristotle had said, you know, that of all the pleasures in life, the best is contemplation and thinking and reading because unlike the other pleasures that wax and wane, thinking, reading, and contemplation is constant. You can do it all day long. It's very enjoyable and it's enjoyable throughout your life. I mean, there's a lot of things you can't do. When you get older, you can't play a lot of sports anymore, but you can always be reading and learning, and it makes life a lot more interesting. And um, anyways, reading has been one of the great joys of my life, and it's helped me tremendously, so hopefully uh, this lecture was helpful to you.